In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We just read in Ephesians this very striking phrase, You were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. We are light. We are no longer darkness. And you notice, he doesn't say, you were dark, but you were darkness itself. And now, it's not that we are illumined, we are light in the Lord. We have become part of the Lord, and the Lord is the light of this world. And in Ephesians 5, Christ calls his disciples children of light. So we are children of light. And sometimes this light becomes very manifest, as in the case of St. George Kashlidis or St. Charbel Maklouf. When they died, as their spirit left their bodies, they became so luminous that people could see this light. In fact, when St. Charbel died, his whole monastery was so lit up with light, people in the village thought the monastery was on fire, and they ran up to put the fire out. But it was just St. Charbel radiating the light of Christ that was within him. Christ shines in us through the Holy Spirit, and he gives us the mind of Christ as scripture calls it. We have the mind of Christ, but we don't get this through the flesh. We get this through the Holy Spirit. And we read in, also in scripture that there's going to be a new world, a new earth, a new heaven, and Christ is going to be the sun of this universe. It won't be the physical sun that we have, that we can see, which is so beautiful today, as a matter of fact, but this is nothing compared to what the universe will be like and Christ himself is the, is the sun of the universe. New world, new sun. We read in Psalm 98 that Christ spoke to the Jews, to the Hebrews, through a pillar in the cloud, of the cloud. He spoke to them through a cloud. It wasn't light yet because they hadn't received the light of Christ fully. That's how he spoke to them at that time. But today he speaks to us directly. Uh, there, there are people, St. John Chrysostom says, there are some people who say, oh, I wish I had lived at the time of Christ so I could see him and touch his garment and see his sandals and everything. He says, no. Today, we have his body and his blood on the altar. We can see it, we can touch it, we can feed from it, we can eat the body and blood of Christ. We have much more than those who saw Christ at that time. But to be able to acquire this light, to, to be able to become children of light, we have to place our confidence in God. A lot of people just place their confidence in themselves. They are very self-confident. But remember the two men who went up to the temple to pray? Mm -hmm. One of them said, I thank you, Lord, <coughs> that you have made me so good. I'm not like this tax collector, this sinner here. Now, I pay my taxes, and I do this, and I do that. Confident in himself. But who went home justified? The poor sinner who repented and asked God to forgive him. Whereas the one who thought he was righteous went back home with the sin of pride. We can trust sometimes in our goodness. We think we're good. We're good because we see people around us who are worse. So that's how we consider ourselves good. We can trust in men sometimes, or in governments. And yet, when they lie, they are contradicting the Word of God. So we cannot have confidence either in ourselves, or in others, or in men, or in governments. We can only have confidence in the Word of God. And this is where we begin to receive the, the light of Christ. St. John Chrysostom says, Oh, poor human reason, uh, our own human reason. When it trusts in itself, it substitutes the highest absurdities for the highest divine concepts. In other words, the things that we praise that are human 
and that just come from the mind are absurdities compared to the highest divine God. And we see this today, all this woke movement that's going on in our country and, and in Europe and in other parts of the world now, it's starting. All of that woke movement, it's nothing but the strangest absurdities compared to the highest of divine concepts. So we mustn't listen to men, we must listen to God. Mother Teresa said one time, she said, uh, I know God is never going to give me anything I can't do, anything I can't handle. I just wish he didn't have so much faith in me. <laughs> but St. Augustine tells us, pray as if everything depended on God, but work as if everything depended on you. There's the we have to do our part, because we're part of Christ. We have to do everything as if it depended on us, but pray as if everything depends upon God, because everything does depend on it. Christ says, with me, without me, you can do nothing. He's, he's not speaking of the material order. He's speaking of the spiritual order. Without me, you can do nothing. And it's a sign of great spiritual maturity when we put our full confidence in God. Because he says, ask and you shall receive. <clears throat> Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it will be opened unto you. That's what he tells us. Because truth, it's not an abstract idea. Truth is not an abstract idea that is sought by the mind and known by the mind. It's something personal. It's a person. Christ. Truth is Christ. And that's why we must have full confidence in him and, and not be preoccupied with clothing and with food and uh, the prevailing temper of contemporary society. All of those things are passing. God will give us what we need. We always have what we need. Because life is greater than all of these things. Because God is the life of the world. Christ gave us this life. <laughs> Even in churches, uh, it's not the spirit of Christ to overly luxuriously create churches. Like St. John Chrysostom says, he says, the church is the triumphant company of the angels. It's not the workshop of a silversmith. In other words, there where the angels are, there where prayer is, there where the light of the children of God are, that is the church. It may even be in a barn. It may be in a cellar that you're having to hide from the enemies. And You know, the, the cup that Christ used at the Last Supper, it wasn't made of gold. It wasn't made of gold. That's why I love the expression people say sometimes. Well, in the early church, the chalices were made of wood, but the priest's hearts were made of gold. Today, the chalices are made of gold, but too often the priest's hearts are made of wood. They are unfeeling. We mustn't place all our trust in ourselves. St. Peter did it. I'll never betray you. I'll go with you to the death. And three times, he denied having known Christ when Christ had been arrested. But it humbled him. He humiliated himself. He wept. He asked forgiveness. And he became Saint Peter. But he had too much confidence in himself. We think, oh, I can do this and I can do that. Not without Christ we can't. We have to let the sweet, sacred secrets of inner communion radiate through us in everything that we do in our daily lives. When we're dealing with people that are bored, people that are demanding, people that are hard to put up with, tedious little tasks that we have to do. I know one lady, she told me recently, she said, I don't like to cook. I have to spend most of my day cooking. <laughs> <laughs> So we have tedious things like that in life we have to do. 
But if we do them with that inner light, that inner graciousness, the Christ present within us, everything becomes transformed into light. And we can radiate, we can radiate that to others. St. Basil says, he made the angels and spirits ministers of flaming fire. The angels are light. They're light from God. We can become light from God like the angels. We can become just like them. In the Philokalia, we read that when people are traveling on the sea and there's a terrible storm and the wind and everything which is really running the risk of a, of a shipwreck and people are going to die. What do people do? They throw everything overboard to lighten up the ship. They throw it overboard. Likewise, as we travel through the sea of this tempestuous life, there are many things within us we have to throw overboard, lighten up our ship so that the light can come within us. There was a man, this is just a story, there's a man who was falling off a cliff, he grabbed on, it was just like a clump of grass, and he says, my Lord, my Lord, help me, are you there? He says, yes, I'm here. He says, help me, yes, I'll help you, but let go of the clump of grass, let go of the clump of grass. Is there anyone else here to help me? He said, <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have trust in God. He didn't have his, his faith in God. Huh? And so I love this, this prayer of St. Patrick, where St. Patrick says, Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ in me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ on my right, Christ on my left, Christ when I lie down, Christ when I sit down, Christ when I arise, Christ in the heart of every man who thinks of me, Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me, Christ in the eye of everyone who sees me, Christ in every ear that hears me. Christ is everywhere. And let us look for him, and we will find him everywhere. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.